Uh, welcome back. Uh, you're watching Credlin. Now, there's no surprise at all in this. Labor's current interventions in the gas and energy markets have become a disaster. Since the government was elected and introduced this wholesale price on gas prices, well, they've just gone up. It's a complex policy area with parts flying all over the place, but the ramifications for everyday Australians is massive. We're all going to end up paying more. Joining me now to break through all of this bloke who has no difficulty getting clear messages out, gets through the jargon, Liberal National Party Senator for Queensland, Matt Canavan, joins us from Yapoon. Welcome to you, Matt. I mean, prices, they've increased in Queensland, what, 30%? They're now saying average across Australia, 19%. Uh, this is, by any measure, uh, a disaster. And the, the Treasurer uh, really has got the worst-case scenario right. How are we going to actually deal with this situation? Well, it's unfortunately simple, uh, uh, Gary, but I'm sure, given your experience, you understand that uh, simple um, yeah. uh, issues or simple me measures aren't easily digested in Canberra. Uh, they don't like that. They want to make no. things complex. They want to fit things through a political prism. And the simple message we need here is we need to supply more gas, we need to supply more energy, uh, particularly we need more energy that can be relied upon. Uh, 24 hours a day, so-called baseload power. If we had more of that stuff, more supply, that would bring prices down. Uh, while we have a strong economy, uh, which we'd like to keep, uh, and if we don't have enough energy, enough power, that's going to force uh, prices up, and that's what we're seeing in, in this in this last year. The government would have you believe that it's all because of the war in Ukraine, uh, but gas prices on the government's own figures, global gas prices, are now lower than they were uh, when uh, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine in February last year. Uh, and so how, does it, how is our prices going up if prices have actually fallen, gas prices have actually fallen over the last year across the world? They're going up here in Australia because we have a shortage in Australia for Australian reasons, because our governments, uh, state and federal, have gone woke and gone green and they've failed to approve energy projects. They've invested way too much in unreliable solar and wind energy and that's led to a shortage of power. And when you get a short shortage of something the price of it goes up. Well, you know, you've got ministers today saying that people are trying to game the system just to blame the government and, and game it. The ACCC's accused the government's price cap as, of, of, or assessed it as having a minefield of uncertainty. How, I mean, how are gas retailers and businesses actually expected to work in this new system? Well, this is one of the most botched policies I have seen uh, from any government uh, in many years. Uh, this was a radical Soviet-like uh, clampdown trying to regulate the gas price in this country and it was imposed uh, in just a matter of days. It was a matter of days between, less than a week, between the government announcing this price cap policy and it forcing it through uh, the parliament in late December last year. I mean, even the Bolsheviks took uh, seven or eight months, uh, 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 um, Gary, between the March Revolution and the October Revolution. It took them a while. Uh, to establish power and uh, full Soviet control, uh, the, the, the Labor government here tried to do so in less than a week. And that has, as you have said, caused mass confusion uh, within energy markets. Uh, uh, you are seeing effectively the freezing up of those markets now, new contracts not being signed, of course, new investments being shelved. Uh, and that's what's now forcing the price up a bit further. In fact, electricity future prices over the past month since the government's intervention have actually increased uh, so they've made this situation worse uh, through their intervention. Uh, and the best thing they could do now would be to turn around, eat some humble pie, put down the Christmas pudding, eat some humble pie, uh, and scrap this Soviet uh, command-style response, get back to trying to promote business and investment in this country. That's how we'll lower prices for consumers. Yeah, if you're going to lose, lose quickly. I say, I mean, obviously, we're not producing enough gas, getting more supply in the system. But I would have thought, Matt, the second the government started telling you how you're going to cook your dinner, I reckon people are going to stop and pay attention. The backyard barbies have got to go back to timber again. You can't have gas. It's just... Uh just insane. Well, it's really a barbecue is. stopper, isn't let's it? It's start, literally let's... a barbecue stopper of an issue. Oh, it is. It is in every possible way. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about France. Uh, it's uh, no wonder to see how we've ended up this way with our narrow-minded focus on climate change inflicting every aspect uh, of our economy over in France. New changes come into effect on Monday, which will now force all university degree courses to include instruction on climate transition. Oh, Matt, look, this can't be far off. <laughs> in Australia, you've got to follow the new religion. It's a cult, isn't it? Well, you're right to use the word religion there, 
uh, Gary, it's uh, just another marker of the sad decline of Western institutions. Uh, you know, universities were, uh, were the, the birthplace of modern universities was Western Europe, uh, and they were wellsprings of debate uh, and and and, and um, challenging uh, existing institutions and views, uh, particularly those that were established around the Catholic Church uh, at the time in medieval Europe, and that yep. gave forth. Uh, uh, the Renaissance and the Age of Reason, Enlightenment, lots of amazing developments, modern science itself uh, across Western Europe. But now we have this re-imposition of state control and state dogma, uh, a theocracy, if you like, based on the climate religion, that you must uh, learn this. Uh, and it's been principally done, uh, so sadly, through our universities, which were that wellspring uh, of, uh, of, uh, of diversity and discourse. But if there's one thing the left wing hate, Gary... It is diversity. They mention it all the time, but as soon as there's a little bit of an outbreak of diverse opinions or views, uh, there is one big clenched fist that comes down and tries to stamp them out. So, look, I just hope students are often quite rebellious types and uh, hopefully uh, they won't take this, uh, the, this dogma lying down. They'll, they'll, they'll come up with their own views, their own thoughts, uh, because we need that three think thinking uh, to survive and thrive as, uh, as prosperous economies. Ecological transition courses. I don't know how that's going to keep the lights on, but let's talk about job figures that have been released today. Unemployment has remained steady, 3.5%, but sadly so too is the number of vacant jobs around the country. Obviously, there are people who can work who aren't working. How do we fix that? Well, look, there's a, there's a few things going on here, Gary. I mean, our participation rate is quite high, so uh, while there are still some people that... Uh, should be encouraging to work. Uh, 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 there's, there's probably a, a, a declining, a, a diminishing well there. Uh, I certainly think we should be careful about trying to massively increase the doll or these things that will only make this situation worse. Obviously, we're still recovering from the impacts yep. of coronavirus and especially the closure of our borders. Uh, we're down around 500,000 people because of that. Uh, that can only be uh, rectified over time and I certainly don't think we should just be importing lots of people in response. But I think the biggest thing that often goes unmentioned here is that we have to clamp down government spending. A lot of the reason for the tightness in labour markets and tightness in the broader economy, uh, the reason for rising interest rates, is because the government is spending too much money. Now, it had to do some of that through the coronavirus, but uh, the money that's being thrown out the door on the NDIS, on health services more generally, is contributing a lot to this. In fact, Health employment has been the bigger dri biggest driver here. It's growing at more than double population growth in Australia. And so that's soaking up a lot of workers that could otherwise be used in the private sector. The government, if you like, is crowding it out and making it hard for the private sector in this country. So we've got to get more reasonable there. We've got to get our debt down. We've got to get, be disciplined on spending uh, if we want to have a balanced and functioning economy without these rising interest rates and high cost of living. Always good to talk to you, Matt Canavan. Thank you so much for joining us on Credlin tonight. Thanks, Gary.